Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. And now, Tider Insider TV. And we're proud to once again call the University of Alabama our national champions. Thank you and roll tide. The fifth White House visit of the Nick Saban era, the first of the Donald Trump presidency. Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide football team spent the afternoon in Washington, D.C., being honored as the college football national champions. And good evening, everybody. Welcome in to Tider Insider TV, presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock Bottling Company, alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm WVUA 23 Sports Director Gary Harris. Once again this week, nice ice-cold Diet Pepsi for our pleasure. Hear the sound? That's nice, but let me tell you something. That taste is even better going down. Remember to get some great Pepsi products the next time you're at your local grocery or convenience store. Well, after President Trump made some lengthy remarks and honored some special Alabama football players, Coach Saban took to the podium and talked about the White House honor that is becoming so common for the Crimson Tide. You know, not many people get invited to the White House, so uh, not many people get invited to see the president and meet the president. Uh, so this is a special day for our team, uh, a team that uh, is being honored here because of their achievements in terms of winning the college football national championship, which makes me very proud. So a special honor for the Tide, but the team comes right back to Tuscaloosa tonight because the players are in the midst of spring practice. And on Saturday, we had our first scrimmage of the spring. And Coach Saban said the first scrimmage provides a lot of opportunities for all the players. Maybe it helps guys realize and have enough foresight to know that we can't afford to make mistakes. Um, you know, we got to do things correctly and make the other teams beat us. And I thought it was a good start today. All right, Ronnie, just one spring scrimmage. The media has very viewing, uh, very limited viewing opportunities, mainly just a warm-up period. But uh, you've got sources, you've got people you talk to. Just your takeaway from scrimmage number one. You know, Gary, I, I think after a scrimmage, a post-scrimmage in the spring, this might be the least talked about scrimmage that I, I can recall in a while. But, uh, you know, certainly a lot of holes to fill on, on the uh, defensive side of the ball when you look at that side with the secondary. But, you know, all the reports seem to be really good. Trevon Diggs at one corner did not participate at the other one. Uh, there you see number eight, Savion Smith. He's a guy, Gary, getting a lot of buzz this spring. And, you know, it's so important to have those corners in this defense. And it looks like Diggs and, and, and Smith both doing a great job. Um, you know, the, the defensive line continues to develop younger players. Obviously, they lost Deron Payne. Quinnen Williams doing a nice job in the middle there. Uh, on the offensive side, obviously, Tua Tongo Valoa was limited, but you know, the, the feedback we get that is he did extremely well throwing the football. Gary, accurate, had some really big throws, and also Jalen Hurts. Uh, Mac, Mac Jones also did really well throwing the football. So, again, it, it's a scrimmage that not a lot of information in terms of, you know, big plays and all of those types of things sometimes that leak out, but uh, sounds like it was very solid. Well, one thing Coach Saban said last week, Rodney, was the defense uh, traveling the offense in terms of leadership. Obviously, the offense returns a lot of key players, while the defense – lost some major impact players. One returning linebacker, though, believes the defense will get it together, and he has very high hopes for that unit. I don't want to be that defense that we had in 2015 where we almost won every game and led in all defensive stats. So that's been my main focus, just being, a, being able to be a part of a, a special unit. I know this team, we have a lot of talent on this team, so we can definitely be really special. Rodney, the defense loses basically the entire secondary, several really key defensive linemen and linebackers, yet there's no denying, as Terrell Lewis uh, referred to there, that there's a ton of physical talent. I mean, oh, yeah. some guys that are really gifted athletically yeah. on that side of the ball. Does this defense have the yeah. potential to rate right up there with the best that Nick well, Saban's had? They certainly have a chance, Gary, to be very, very good. I think when you look at it up front defensively, you lose pain, but you've got Isaiah Bugs, You've got Raquan Davis, who have had you know, really good off seasons and, and good starts to the spring. And, uh, you know, I mentioned Quentin Williams coming on. LeBron Ray is another excellent young defensive lineman. Uh, we think Fedarian Mathis is going to be really good as well. 
You know, you look at the two inside linebackers. Not a lot of depth there, but Dylan Moses inside along with Mac Wilson. That's a pretty good-looking duo. Outside, you've got Terrell Lewis. Uh, you've got Christian Miller back. You've got a young player like Chris Allen. You've got Jerez Parks as a freshman going through the spring right now. Uh, Anthony Jennings is not participating, but what a dominant player he was late last season. In the secondary, there you see Deontay Thompson, really a young group. This guy, he started two games last year in the playoffs, and now he may be the veteran of the group. So we mentioned some of the corners earlier. Uh, I, I think it has a chance, but again, spring's about development. That's a great opportunity to have these 15 practices to get these guys on the same page. And you also have a uh, several new coaches on that side of the ball. Mm -hmm. You have three new coaches. You only have one guy coming back, Tosh Lapoy, and he's been elevated to defensive coordinator. This will be the first time he's ever called a defense. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, obviously new to this defense. But, again, with Nick Saban here, with the talent they have, I think they're going to be okay. All right, let's move on to some recruiting news. Alabama picked up a couple of commitments for the 2019 class last week. A legacy quarterback. Coach Bryant's great-grandson, a four-star quarterback from Hewitt Trustful, Paul Tyson, also a four-star defensive tackle out of Ellenwood, Georgia, in the Atlanta area. Rashad Chaney, previously a Georgia commitment. Roddy, that gives Alabama a total of six commitments for 2019. All six are four stars or better, according to the recruiting rankings. Uh, what do you think of these two that, uh, recruited, uh, that were committed uh, to Alabama last week? Let's start with Paul Tyson, the quarterback from nearby Hewitt Trustful. Yeah, I really like Paul Tyson. You know, he's only had one full year starting Gary last year threw for 3,600 yards, 34 touch, 36 touchdowns, only four interceptions. A guy that you know, I, I think when you look at quarterbacks, it's one of the most developmental positions there is, maybe the most developmental position. Very few guys can step in and play as freshmen, like Jalen Hurts did, like Tua Tongo Vailoa did last year uh, in that situation. And uh, but when you look at him, Gary, he's got the tools in terms of developing long term. I really like him. He's got legit height. He's got a good arm. Uh, you know, he reminds me of a little bit, and I'm not saying he's this guy, but especially wearing that 17, uh, reminds me a little bit of Phillip Rivers when you watch him throw the football. Yeah, he's got the size, quick release. That's not a bad comparison because Phillip Rivers has been one of the best uh, NFL quarterbacks for a long time originally from Athens, Alabama, went to NC State. Defensively, we know that there's going to be a premium and premium on recruiting defensive yep. linemen in this class. And Rashad Chaney certainly a great start to that. Uh, a, a guy that's uh, going to get a little more weight on him, but very athletic inside defensive lineman. Originally committed to Georgia. Nice pickup for Alabama. It really is. You know, he, you know, it reminds me of a little bit is uh, Dalvin Tomlinson right. coming out of high school. Dalvin, of course, was also from the state of Georgia, very similar size, very similar athletically. Uh, I, I really like Rashad Chaney. I, I think when you look at the defensive line recruiting, I think Alabama has a great shot to get several top defensive linemen in this class. But the one thing to remember, Alabama has Craig Kuligowski now on the defensive line. He has a great reputation for developing, taking guys and developing, getting the most out of them. He recruited a lot of kids at Missouri that were not highly regarded, ended up first-round draft picks. All right, so the recruiting train still rolling along the tracks. And Alabama looking to get back in that top one or at least the second spot for 2019. Well, still to come on TITV, how different will the Alabama basketball team look next season? Colin Sexton on the way out. We'll talk about who's coming back. And coming up, we'll be getting your phone calls, emails, and tweets. As always, the phone number 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Or email us at TITV at WVUA23.com. Or you can tweet at us. Use that hashtag TITV so we'll be sure and get to your tweet. We'll be right back with a show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV will return right after this. I'm officially declaring for the 2018 NBA Draft. Thank you, and roll tide. Well, the announcement came a little later than we anticipated, but it was the expected result. Colin Sexton is moving on to the NBA. Welcome back to Tider Insider TV. Sexton leaves after arguably the most productive freshman campaign in Alabama men's basketball history. But while he is moving on, we also got the news that senior Raleigh Norris is coming back. Norris's petition for a medical redshirt was approved, so he'll be back with the Tide next season. He'll be one of the most experienced players on the roster. He only played nine games this past season before undergoing hip surgery, but played a lot his freshman, sophomore, and junior campaign, including leading Alabama in three-pointers made in, as a junior and also averaging nine points per game that year. So that is a big hit, not only in terms of talent, but also leadership. So Norris is back. Sexton is gone. 
What are your thoughts on the direction of this men's basketball team going forward after the first NCAA tournament appearance in six years and the first tournament victory in 12? Yeah, well, you know, when you lose a difference maker like that, he, let's be honest. I mean, you have to say the reason Alabama made it to the dance was Colin Sexton. He's played in the SEC tournament. I mean, he turned it up a notch. Uh, you know, they beat Virginia Tech in the, the first round there in the NCAA tournament. I, you know, again, you, you've got if you're going to be going to be a successful program, though, Gary, you've got to find ways to replace guys. You've got to take the talent that you have, and 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 make it into a team. And I think when you look at this group, when they played together, sometimes when Sexton wasn't on the floor, I thought they played pretty well at times. So I, I think that, again, they're going to be a little bit of a different team without him. But at the same time, I think they're going to have a, a lot more experience this year. A lot of those guys are more experienced. And I'm really interested to see this Texas transfer, Tevin Mack, yeah. what kind of contribution he can make. I think he was their leading scorer in Texas uh, a couple of years ago, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, he can put it in the basket, yeah. that's for sure. And I like Jared Butler, that incoming point freshman point guard. So we'll see. And in Riley Norris, as I said, you get back not only a talented player, but a tremendous leader, a veteran guy that's been through the wars. I think this is big because we didn't know for sure if Norris would come back sure. or if he would transfer as a graduate transfer to another school. So for him to come back to Alabama for a fifth year, this is a nice pickup of a of a of an old player who's kind of like a new player now. Yeah, right. I understand certainly. And and Gary, I do agree with you. I think it's big. I think he's obviously got some leadership. He's got a tremendous amount of experience. You know, he can knock down some shots from the outside there. You see it right there. I mean, if he can continue to do that next year, certainly they're going to need that. All right, the Alabama baseball team is coming off its second straight SEC series win. Alabama beat Mizzou in Columbia on Friday, then took the second game of a Saturday doubleheader to win its first road series of the season. By comparison, Alabama only won one road series all of last year. Now, the Tide is in action for a midweek game against UAB tonight. Right now, that game's going on, and we'll update you on the score later in the program. So a big series win for baseball, but a tough loss for the Alabama softball team. Florida won the rubber match at Rhodes Stadium last night, 3-2. to two. The loss dropped the Crimson Tide to 25-11 and 11 on the season, 6-6 six and six in the SEC. And Alabama is on the road for a big series against Arkansas this weekend. When we come back, some things never change, like Alabama gymnastics going to the NCAA championships. We'll have an update on the Crimson Tide. And up next, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, you see the information on your screen on how you can get in touch with us. So go ahead and give us a call at 205-348-9882 while phone lines are open, because we'll be right back with your thoughts right after this. I will tell you what I've been telling the ladies for a long time. We are going to be grateful for every single opportunity that we are given, and we are going to expect nothing. Well, although we've come to expect nothing less than an NCAA championship appearance, the Crimson Tide Gymnastics Squad is heading to the NCAAs for the 36th consecutive season. Wow. wow. Bamba won the Tuscaloosa Regional with a score of 197.225 and will head to St. Louis for the national semifinals next Friday. Congratulations to Alabama Gymnastics, the epitome of consistency. Right now, let's head to the phone lines. First up this evening is Stephen in Northport. Welcome into the program, Stephen. Hey, guys. Got one question, but I got a couple of things to say real quick. Before okay. That, uh, the shirts are beautiful. Thank you, sir. Uh, every week they look great. <laughs> I'm drinking me a Diet Pepsi right now because of the show. I went to eat at Buddy's. Me and my wife did last week. You the man. Great wonderful service. Great food. Hey, listen, guys. Mika Fitzpatrick is going to be, uh, possibly be picked by the Buccaneers, which would be great because him and O.J. Howard be re reunited. We'll have some Alabama connections. How many more players do y'all feel will be drafted in what order? Oh, gosh. Uh, high, guys. All right. Uh, I do think Mika will be the first. Now, let's just stick with the first round because I've jotted some guys down here. Um, I think Miko will go first. I think there's a good chance that, that Ridley and Rashawn go pretty high in the first round. I don't know who would go before the other. Uh, Deron Payne, I think Alabama will have four first-rounders. I think all those guys play, go in the first round. I think Ronnie Harrison probably has dropped to early second. Uh, wouldn't shock me if he went in the first, but I think probably early second after that. Rodney, let's let's think of some more. Uh, Bo Scarborough is going to be drafted. That is, well, that Deshaun is for sure. Hand would be another uh, one. Deshaun Hand is going to be drafted. Anthony Averett's going to be drafted. Levi Wallace is going to be drafted. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 
you know, there's probably Possibly another Possibly J.K. Scott might get drafted. Yeah, there's certainly a, a chance that he might get drafted. And I tell you, I don't think he's going to be drafted. But how about the uh, the pro day that Jamar King had? He had unbelievable pro day. I mean, after hardly playing on the defensive line, yeah. he'll probably get in as a free agent. Uh, Josh Frazier will get in as a free agent. So to answer your question, Stephen, I think you could be looking at three or four first round picks and maybe what eight or nine or ten guys total being drafted. And, and Cam Sims is another guy that yeah. could be uh, probably not picked, but certainly a free yeah. agent. So it's going to be another big haul for the NFL from Alabama. All right, let's go to Coleman and talk with Kurt. Kurt, welcome into the program. How are you? Hey, how you doing, guys? Well, hey, uh, I watched that game now, man, Alabama, Florida, and uh, I see we six and six in conference, man. The little girl Alexis Osorio, man, they seemed like they just rolled her to death, man. She had over 170 pitches, man, and once she got tired, that looked like she went to walking people, man, and they got those two runs and they gave them right back. I just seems like we're spreading ourselves thin on that softball team now for the pitching go, man. What do you guys think? Well, I, I think this. I think Alexis Osorio is a big-time pitcher. She's proven it for four years. I also think Florida is one of the best teams in the country, and they're hard to beat. Uh, that's why they're ranked in the top five. Uh, Alabama had a chance last night. They led two to nothing. She walked too many batters. There's no doubt about it. She's walking too many batters. That's what's running up her pitch count. I think she had uh, eight or nine walks last night, Rodney. She only gave up two hits. Now, Romello, the, the Romanello, the freshman, got them both, a two-run double and a home run to win the game. I thought she pitched great. I thought she hung in there tough. I agree. You probably don't want her throwing 170 pitches, but uh, she gave them a chance to win. They got the two-run homer from Tal. It wasn't enough. Uh, I thought Alabama to get one game and have a chance to win the series against a team like Florida is doing pretty well. They're 6-6 six and six in the SEC. I think they got a chance still to host a regional. They're going to have to finish the season strong. But let me say this, because I'm getting a lot of – comments about softball, my radio mm -hmm, show here, mm -hmm. tech. A lot of people are disappointed. Listen, it, it's getting like it is in football or baseball or basketball. It's a tough league, Rodney. Mm. Uh, it, the days of Alabama sweeping all these teams like they did 10 years ago, it's not going to happen anymore. You're trying to win series, hopefully get two out of three. It's a tough, tough league. Everybody else has gotten yeah. better. They've elevated their game, and they're at Alabama's level. Yeah, it makes it very, very difficult. And, I mean, you can even see it in the SEC in football, Gary. We've talked about that. Everybody's trying to elevate their game to catch up to Alabama. And you look at what, you know, Patrick Murphy obviously was way ahead of the curve, and now you look at these programs. Auburn, Florida, all these programs have kind of started to catch up. So it's because they're putting more emphasis on yeah, it. Yeah, it's a tough, tough league. All right, Tommy and Talladega, you hold tight. We'll get to you when we come back. We've got to take a time out when we come back and look at Alabama's only home track and film meet of the season and more of your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Keep them coming. We'll be right back with more TITV. I'm a tennis on Friday. The men knocked off number 21, Georgia, at home. It was the first win over the Bulldogs in 15 years. The win moved Alabama to 16-8 and eight overall. They did uh, lose on Sunday, but that was a big win over Georgia. They are on the road for their final two matches in the regular season, starting with Florida in Gainesville on Friday. And the track and field team celebrated multiple individual winners at the Crimson Tide Invitational this past weekend. Junior shot putter Cord Ferguson set a personal best in the shot, while junior Shelby McEwen and Will Hersher took first in the high jump and pole vault, respectively. The men's team is ranked eighth, while the women are number 22. And let's go right back to the phone lines. Tommy's been patiently waiting there in Talladega. Hey, Tommy, how are you? Oh, pretty good. How are y'all? Very well. Oh, uh, I've been watching Alabama football, and I've seen it this year where Saban has made changes to make them better. How come Patrick Murphy's not doing this? I mean, when you got a pitcher that walks nine, I mean, give somebody else a chance. All right, Tommy. Yeah, I, I you know what? I, I, I'm going to say this to you. I, I'm, I'm as a big a believer in Patrick Murphy as I am in Nick Saban. They're both national championship caliber coaches. Uh, they're 6-6 six and six in the league. I know the, the standard, like for football, it's so high. I get it. If Alabama loses two or three in football, there's going to be somebody calling in asking what's happened to Nick Saban. Uh, I trust that Patrick Murphy will get it fixed if there needs if there's something that needs to be fixed I, I do believe that Tommy and and first of all this season's not over there's a lot of softball left we said this last year and then they came with this an eyelash of beating Florida in the Super Regional to go to the World Series let's see how it all plays out before we start judging this particular team uh, this harshly I think yeah you know not to that point but or his point but Gary when you look at it I think you mentioned it the expectations that everyone has of this program every year and I think what happens is you know people as you mentioned earlier, the competition's greater now. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it makes it more difficult. And I think when you're not 
top five, like they expect Alabama softball to be, there's a little bit of panic sets in at this point. But you're right. Last year, we said, let the season play out and look how it ended. Yeah. They came within they, an eyelash, as you said. They finished hot. But uh, I do agree with you, Tommy. She threw a lot of pitches last night. She's walking a lot of batters. Uh, that needs to improve. All right, let's go to an email, Rodney. And this is from Andrew. Provide names of the defensive linemen who have played in at least one snap in a game uh, from last season. And, and you got the participation chart, so that's about all you yeah, need to run it down. Yeah, you know, Gary, uh, there's, there's ten of them. If you include Anthony Jennings, now technically he's probably a, a linebacker, really. But if you wanted to consider him because he did put his hand down, Terrell Lewis, Lewis uh, also was one of those. But I got ten that played, and four of those from last year are gone. So that means they got six back if you include Anthony Jennings. We could go through all of them, but uh, you get the drift. There's six back. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a situation maybe where the numbers aren't where they need to be. They're looking for some depth, no right. doubt about it. Real quickly, did you want to talk to Bentley? Bentley, you got to go fast, man. Yes, sir. It's a first-time caller. Enjoy. Thank you, sir. To go and watching it each week. But uh, – I know it was talked about Rodney earlier about the middle linebacker, and I know her depth's limited right there, but what is the name of some of the reserves that may be stepping up in that position? And I'll get off right. Right. Thank you, Bentley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I tell you, Markel Benton is a guy that's a redshirt freshman that has a ton of potential. Again, he's got to develop. Uh, Joshua McMillan's been around. Uh, you know, Gary, they're working Ben Davis there yeah. some. Dylan Moses, I mean, this is, a, this is a place where maybe a true freshman, yeah. Jalen Moody, could come in. But the, the problem is, I think it's got to be a priority in this recruiting class. All right, we're back to wrap it up after this. Thanks for the calls. Nick Saban and Alabama football presented longtime practice official Eddie Conyers with a number 90 jersey because he's 90 years young and a birthday cake. Congratulations to Eddie. He's a great guy. Alabama baseball leads UAB top of the 4-3-2 highlights at 10. Our beautiful shirts and ties provided as always by the locker room in downtown Tuscaloosa, home of the original elephant wear. Get by and see them in person or shop online. Either way, you'll be glad you did. They'll have you looking like a million bucks. You heard Steven talking about how good we look. It's because of the locker room, I can tell you that. All right, that's going to do it for the program. You can catch a replay of the show tonight at 10.30 or anytime at WVUA23.com. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Good night.